Welcome back. Ending weeks of rumors and speculation, Governor David Patterson announced Friday he will not run for a full term. Joining us this morning to talk about the bombshell announcement, political columnist for the New York Daily News and host of the morning show on WWRL Radio, Errol Lewis, and political analyst and CBS2 blogger Steve Adubato. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. Good morning, Rob. Let's get right to it. Bombshell announcement for Friday. Did you see it coming? I mean, look, David Patterson, uh, it's death by a thousand cuts, if you will. He's the, you know, it's not my term. He's the accidental governor. And I've never seen someone in a chief executive's position um, more poorly prepared. I mean, I've never seen someone ill-equipped like that. He had no executive experience. His judgment was all off. And time after time, he showed that he was not up to being governor. And now, with this investigation and in terms of his top you know, it's like DJ Johnson, his top guy, you know, with this uh, situation with this young lady where there's domestic violence. What is the governor doing calling her the day before she's supposed to go to court? Where is his head? What was he years, thinking with all these problems? It had to happen, and I don't think it's the end. He's got to go. Errol, was this latest situation the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess? Well, it was more like the, the axe that chopped the camel's head off. I mean, <laughs> it, it, there was death by a thousand cuts, and then this was the equivalent of stepping on a landmine. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, the, the reality is, and I've interviewed him at this point about 10 times, and he always complains about the press treatment, and much of the press treatment has been unfair and unprofessional. There's no question about that. You know, when you see people printing unsubstantiated rumors and putting it, you know, out there, it, 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 was, it was bad. Uh, on the other hand, what Steve says is true. There was a lot of dysfunction in that administration. And then now, and this is the thing that brings the whole government to a halt, there are actions that cannot be explained mm. um, uh, short of a possible criminal uh, uh, activity. You know, you can't call, you can't say that it's okay for the state police to uh, talk to somebody and acquaint them with their options when you know that they're uh, in court bringing forward a domestic violence action against a senior member of the administration. You can't do that. Well, Aaron, the, what's worse about it is that he knows the situation he's in. He knows what the New York Times was or wasn't going to do with those stories. Uh, you know, but, the, but ultimately, what it comes down to is his political judgment is so bad. And I actually thought about it. We never really looked at him when he was running. For, he, listen, Spitzer was the candidate. He's lieutenant governor. Number two, never less, really gets looked at, Errol. No executive experience. He hasn't run a candy store. He was a very good legislator, very good speaker, very charismatic, charismatic. People liked him. But you have to have some sense of what it means to be a manager or chief executive. He was the worst. And, I, and Errol, I don't know how you feel, but it's important that he stepped aside and not run. But I don't see how he governs. Well, that's my next question. Is it enough to say I'm not going to run? Will he eventually have to resign? He's going to have a very hard time, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was hounded out of office. I mean, he, he's got to Why's negotiate a... Well, he doesn't want to go, you know? Oh, okay. so, so, that, that's fair. So, so he, he's not going to have a lot of fun. He's got a lot of work to do. It's, it's under the best of circumstances. It is a maddening exercise to try and negotiate with the state legislature in New York. It's just not Especially a very good... coming up. It's not a very good uh, system. So he's, he's, he was going to have a hard time anyway. But you know what? I'll, I'll take a little bit of responsibility, and I think the press might want to think about this, is when we talked a couple of years ago, we talk about these elections, we talk about uh, race and gender and balance and geographic upstate, downstate, we don't usually ask about things like what you're talking about, like, you right. know, how much experience does the guy have? He wasn't picked because he would be a good number two, God forbid something happened with Spitzer. He was picked because they thought it was the right thing politically. We should have looked at him. Lieutenant governors are important. Yeah. Gentlemen, articulate as always. Uh, we're going to cut it short right now, but we're going to have more from Errol and Steve coming up in the 8 o'clock hour. Of course, you can head over to the politics and power section of our website, WCBSTV.com. Gentlemen, thanks again. Thank you, Cindy. Welcome back. Ending weeks of rumor and speculation, Governor David Patterson announced Friday he will not run for a full term. And joining us once again this morning to talk about the bombshell announcement, political columnist for the New York Daily News and host of the morning show on WWRL Radio, Errol Lewis and political analyst and CBS2 blogger Steve Adubato. So much to talk about last hour. Thank you for sticking around. Much more to talk about. Let's pick up where we left off. Mm. He says he's not running for a full term. Some people say he's going to have to resign. What do you think? I don't think he has any choice. I mean, over time, it's going to be clear that David Patterson, as tough as it's been for him to govern, Earl, I don't see what he does now. This investigation is going to move forward. When the superintendent of the state police, Corbett, when he is quoted in the newspaper, he's quoted as saying he visited this Thank young you. woman involved in the case having to do with D.J. You know, Johnson, who was the chief of staff, top guy you know, for, 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 um, for Patterson. And he said to her, I gave her her options. 
What do you mean you gave her options? It's, a, it's an investigation for the New York City Police Department and you, the head of the state police, gave her options? David Patterson somehow is connected to this? Earl, it's not going away. I don't see how he governs. Well, I don't, I don't think he has a, a, a viable chance of governing well, but let's, let's think for a minute about the chaos that will ensue if he does step down. Okay. You know, we have More than by staying? Perfectly competent guy, uh, Dick Ravitch, who's lieutenant governor, and would then step up, but... Ravage's staff, I think, is fewer than 10 people at this point. You know, he'd have to s staff up, he'd have to gear up, he'd have to get in, in, in uh, some kind of uh, uh, operating uh, c capacity. Months will go by at a time when we've got an $8 billion deficit. Now, we've got no good options in Albany right now, including, mm -hmm. by the way, a state senate that is completely un well, unable to pass a bill in the state right. senate. They mm -hmm. don't have, n neither party has 32 votes, you know, so we've got so many problems. I don't know if throwing even more uncertainty into the mix is I'll, gonna get I'll anybody Respectfully, anyway. respectfully, I don't see how Ravitch, who was put there by Patterson for just this reason, he's only there for one reason, because of experience at the MTA, executive experience, great negotiator, 77 years of age, no doesn't, doesn't look to run for any office. He is, that's why he's there, Rob. I say use him. This investigation that you're, you're both alluding to, the, the aide has stepped down, there's still allegations out there. This snowballs. This doesn't go away. It gets worse. It gets much worse because... The media is all over it because the state police are involved in this, because the state police report to the superintendent of state police who reports to the governor, somehow his hand is in this, and it's not supposed to be, given it's a domestic violence case against his top aide, this young woman, they're not supposed to be talking to her because anyone will look at it and say, are you trying to intimidate her? Even if they weren't, that's what it looks like. Well, you know, unfortunately, in this election year, we've got a big structural problem with the state police and how they've been used and abused. There was a similar problem confronting Elliot Spitzer. There was an investigation mm. that was done, didn't look uh, glowing by any means. The previous uh, superintendent under the Republican, Pataki, had to step down. We've got a real serious problem, and you're not going to clean it up in just a couple of weeks. All right, mm. great talking to you guys. I wish we had much more time. Last hour's conversation is going to be online, so people could check it out. Thank you very much. And and if you'd like some more information, you can go to the politics and power section of our website and get it all there, wcbstv.com. Cindy? Rob, thank you.